Rymar Tech has released several software deployments that has caused customer systems to crash. The release and deployment team has been issued a directive by Rymar Tech's management to find a better way to calibrate the company's software development practices. Which choice would provide the best solution? Is it choice A, threat modeling? Is it choice B, software assurance maturity model? Is it choice C, risk-driven process model? Or is it choice D, SOC 2? Sorry about the crunching, I'm eating cashews. They're an excellent source of protein, by the way. What is up, everyone? And welcome to another CISP practice question review video. It is 9.32 on September 11th, 2023. 22 years ago, around this time, I was in my high school classroom watching what happened in New York City, and then I felt the ground shudder beneath me when, when a plane hit the Pentagon just, just miles away. My high school is in Arlington. I didn't join the military or law enforcement. I didn't join a government agency. I didn't find a way to help. I didn't try to find a way to quell my and millions of others' anger and frustration that day. I just tried my best to remember it every year since. You know, posting stock photos from that day and stating the perennial, never forget. Which, you know, it's fine. It's the least we can do. But today, today I have found a little bit of closure. Today I posted a story of one Andrew Valsich, who at this time, 22 years ago, was a New York City police officer and ran into the burning towers to rescue people and bring them to safety. That's him in this picture. Powerful picture. A picture that will, that's immortalized him forever. Recently he passed a CSP exam too. I linked the full study experience in the description below and, and on my website. And now seeing how Andrew, a 9-11 hero, used my content as one of the ways to pass his CSP exam, it has given me a great sense of accomplishment. At least I helped one person who was there, even if it was 22 years later. So maybe moving forward, I can replace my feeling of helplessness from that day and the years after with a small win like this. So thank you, Andrew, for everything. Congratulations on passing your CSP exam as well. Oh, uh, what a life, what a life. Um, all right, what is the answer to our CISSP practice question? And should your CISSP instructor really be eating cashews in the middle of his presentation? You know what, he has to, because I'm at, I'm like starting my work in 20 minutes. Yeah, I have a professional job, you know, and I'm eating, I'm eating cashews for breakfast, I guess. It's Monday, I, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, let's go over the question. Rymar Tech obviously has some issues with their software deployments and their management does not like that. Probably because they broke a bunch of SLAs with their customers and has had to fork up some sort of monetary or, or service compensation. Because that's what happens when your cloud vendor or regular vendor breaks a part of the SLA agreement they have with your company. You gotta fork over some sort of compensation in some sort of way for a breach of SLA. And Rymar Tech's management has, has asked their release and deployment team to find a way to make sure these crashes don't happen again. And like, if, if, it, if it was just a single event, maybe it wouldn't be a big deal. But if something is happening a couple of times, reoccurring, especially if it's the same thing, well now is the time to start thinking like a manager for the CISP exam. Managers do not like to see the same issue occurring in the organization over and over again. That doesn't look good on their part. And it's not just in security, but also any department. So the answer we're looking for is a way to tighten, to calibrate, to fine tune, or get a better and measurable grip on our software development lifecycle process. This is the ultimate high level objective of this question. Okay, and uh, you know what? I'm gonna put the cashews down because I'm about to, I was about to choke on them and I'm not trying to go out as a CSP instructor doing what I love. I mean, I love what I do, but I'm not trying to die doing this, choking on a cashew while doing a practice question. No, that's not how Luke Ahmed's gonna go out, okay? So now all you have to do is see which choice would make an existing SDLC better. Remember that the question isn't asking for Rymar Tech to have a software development process because they already have that. They're looking for a way to make their software development process better. Which choice would provide that? Is it threat modeling? One of the places where we use threat modeling is the development phase of the software development lifecycle. I know this because I spent like eight days creating a video on software development security and threat modeling was one of the topics. It's in my CSB course portal. 
And I also remember this because for some reason I talk about Muammar Gaddafi or something like that. I have no idea why. I forgot, but I know it was a funny reason. So we use threat modeling in the development phase of the SDLC. As a general overview, step one of threat modeling is diagramming your application. Step two is identifying the threats and possible attacks to your application. And step three is identifying countermeasures for new and existing vulnerabilities. And step four is making sure all of the above has been covered as much as possible within the privilege boundaries and trust flows. Okay, choice B is the Software Assurance Maturity Model, otherwise known as SAM. Much like the Capability Maturity Model Integration, or CMMI, another topic you must know for the CSB exam, by the way, SAM is a way to measure and observe with a process-oriented style that tracks the evolution of your software development process. Not just each step in the SDLC, but the whole thing as in general. I could put it into my own words, but I think OWASP defines it best. From their website about SAM, it says that the Software Assurance Maturity Model evaluates an organization's existing software security practices, builds a balanced software security assurance program in well-defined iterations, builds a balanced software security assurance program in well-defined iterations. Did I just say that two times? I sure did. Hold on a second. See, that's what happens when you're in a rush to do things. What I meant to say for the second one is, um, I'm sorry, what I say for the third one is, demonstrates concrete improvements to a security assurance program, and the fourth one, defines and measures security-related activities throughout an organization. This practice question is based entirely around these four statements. At this point, no matter what the other choices are in this CSP practice question, if you knew the concepts of SAM, your mind should be giving choice B a 90% chance probability of being the correct answer. I mean, you couldn't find a more perfect choice. Rymar Tech has been releasing software deployments with defects. And look at what Sam tries to manage in the security practices of the implementation business function, defect management. Boom. Their software releases clearly have some sort of repeating defect if it's affecting multiple customers. They can keep doing the same SDLC process over and over to try to correct the process, but that isn't going to help. What's going, what's going to help is to use a model that improves their entire SDLC process. It helps it mature from something good to something exceptional. It's using a model to refine another model. <laughs> Very CISSP-like. That's why it's not a technical exam. It's a process-oriented exam. It's a process-oriented, long-term objective accomplishing exam. It's a higher level exam that doesn't just fix a small issue for the company, but make sure the fix is one that is beneficial for the company as a whole, not just their like DevOps team. Rymartech's management, the managers of the company, would find SAM as the best option to improve their internal software development process. It's not threat modeling because that is used within the SDLC process. And it's not exactly threats that's messing up the software releases, most likely. It's some, it's some mistake that is happening over and over again. Some, some line of code or some testing process that's not working right. Some regression testing process, if, I, if you want to get uh, very CISP-like. It's not choice C, a risk-driven process model, because from our CSP studies, that's just another name for the SDLC model known as the Spiral model. Switching to another SDLC model isn't going to help. We need a way to improve the SDLC model itself, no matter which model it is. It's also more administrative overhead, right? What, what will take more work? What's going to take more effort? Switching the entire company to another software development model? or using their existing model, and then looking for ways to refine it through a proven process such as a capability model. It's not choice D, SOC 2, because that has nothing to do with software development or this question, and focuses more on the existing controls of the company operations and compliance, and auditing and all that. Nothing to do with SDLC. This is why you should not skip any pages or any chapters in any domains when you're studying for the CISP exam. Everything is fair game. Even though SOC 2 did not relate to this question at all, if you didn't know what SOC 2 meant, maybe you would have picked as, a, as the right answer. You would have been like, hmm, SOC 2, what, is, what could that stand for? Software Operations uh, Control? Maybe. I'll choose that choice. But if you knew SOC 2 had nothing to do with software development, you could have easily eliminated choice D and given yourself a higher percentage of getting the question correct. 
So ask yourself, are you ready for the CISP exam? And the way to answer that is not if you got the question correct. It's not if you just said, hmm, uh, I say it's choice B, skipped ahead in the video and found out you were correct. That's not how to gauge if you're ready for the CISP exam. You have to be able to completely el eliminate the other choices just like we did in this video. Did you think like a manager? Did you understand that management wanted a high level, long term, and efficient answer that will not only reduce the defects of their software releases, not only their internal SDLC processes, but also lifts their entire company up to a new level of management that helps it perform its overall business function to a great capacity? Did you think about all that? Because that's thinking like a manager for the CISP exam. All right? Good luck on the exam, guys. You're, you're going to do great. Um, especially if you're watching these videos and like following along. You're going you're gonna to pass. And, and if you don't, that's fine too, because some of the best CSPs I know have taken the exam more than once. If you fail, you fail. Okay, we all fail at something. I lost a tennis match the other day. It was crushing. I couldn't, I couldn't, it was, it was not good. But you'll get back up. You'll know what to study next time. You'll have a better, better feel for the exam and you'll take it again and pass and become a sis and you'll look back on these days of thunder and miss them when you're a super security professional. The hard work really only begins after you pass your CISP exam. So enjoy this journey while you're still taking it right now. Thanks for watching.